Hi, welcome. Welcome. Very happy to have you here. So we'll just uh, just take a few seconds to allow uh, yourself to be introduced. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Sanjay. I live in Bogota, Colombia, in South America. I am a dad. I'm a parent of two kids. I I'm an economist. I'm an interaction designer, electronic musician, educator. And I think, uh, well, maybe I'm not only what I do. I'm a happy person. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. So let's go to the first uh, question. Uh, what might be a threshold situation in your life or work or both that you are facing right now? Um, in other words, like a time of unlearning and time for new ideas to, to unfold. <laughs> well, You're touching me like in a very sensible spot right now with that question, because I'm precisely going through a, a very interesting moment um, in every creative process. No, I, I used to be an art teacher. I'm also an, an, an artist and I used to teach uh, my students who were school art teachers that when you when you're in a creative process, you always have this moment sort of like an emptiness and this moment of unknown. <laughs> which is the one you need to go through to be able to start a creative process again. Yeah. And in that sense, um, I, one of my, my, mo I think I'm one in this moment of emptiness right now. Uh, last year, so I've been doing a thing called uh, soul, which promotes, promotes self-organized learning environments. A self-organized learning environment is basically a place, a physical place where you have people, less computers than people with connection to internet, one computer every four or five people, and big questions. And we call them big questions because they're tough questions, interesting questions, engaging questions, right? And what we do is we tell people to learn how to learn together using the internet. internet. There's no teacher, nobody's teaching them. And so I've been doing this for the last seven years uh, here in Colombia because there's lots of public spaces with computers and internet, which nobody uses basically. And uh, last year, With the pandemic coming in, something beautiful happened and we were able to create a very large conversation throughout the country through remote soul sessions, uh, basically not in a physical space, but like in a virtual space and not through a video call. And it was a very interesting uh, experience because it was inviting people to talk about what kind of a, the big question was, what kind of a future do you want to create? And we had this conversation with over 2,500 people, a hundred, more than 100 conversations all over the country. It was beautiful. And there started like a, uh, the, not like an inertia. There was like a momentum of oh, let's change the world together. And people were very engaged, especially in this tough moment because pandemic has been really tough. But also here in Colombia, violence has gotten worse in the, this last year and a half. And so people are having a really tough time. And this being able to talk to someone who maybe you don't know, maybe you do know, about the topic which is very relevant but nobody really finds time to look for was very powerful and that happened last year and this year we tried to keep that momentum but really what we saw is that things got even tougher for everybody so everybody's kind of losing hope a little bit last year we managed to bring hope up uh but then not only with the people we part who participated in our in our great conversation but also with people around me just randomly we see how no this is the moment when the pandemic crisis really sunk in no economically socially politically uh environmentally everything no we're really feeling like exhausted and before it was like no we'll hold on because this is where this is going to finish and now it's like uh maybe it's not going to finish and this is the moment in which I feel that everybody needs inspiration again. And we used to be, we are quite good at inspiring people, but we need to be inspired as well. <laughs> and people inspire us a lot. And, but now I feel that that super momentum kind of crashed down by the reality of the country. We've had uh, big strikes. We have had uh, peaks of COVID with a lot of deaths. And what happened was basically right now we're in the threshold of how, wh what is the next thing we need to do? We know people need inspiration, but how do we do that in a massive, simple, loving way? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the question I, I, I'm in within right now, because obviously everybody's struggling because of money. Money is always 
in the middle of everybody's lives and <laughs> mediating it. And that's the big trouble. And it's also trouble for us at Seoul, Colombia, for me as a parent and whatever. But at the same time, I see that that's kind of getting into everybody's way. And so the threshold now is how do you not let that be what uh, challenges in your way of, of working and also what it is that we need to do to inspire ourselves again to think, no, this is, this is a moment where we can try and do things which we've never done before. And we did them last year and we've been doing them this year and we're still doing them. And people are very excited about it, but it seems tougher. No, it seems tough. Everything seems tougher. So right now the threshold in, in, in our work is to, is to sort of invent the next big thing we're going to do. And it's, I think it has to do with getting people to have conversation, but to act on those conversations, to do something, to not say who's going to solve my problems or how do I solve my own problems? No, maybe if we solve our problems together, it's much more than each one trying to solve their own problem and it's much easier and much more powerful. So that's where we're at. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it sounds very random. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if maybe related to this big next step, if this question could like bridge this. Uh, briefly, maybe we can share, you could share uh, from your journey two or three events or two or three peoples, people that uh, shaped the reimagining process that you have been conducting. Okay, so th th this is nice. Um, a a few months ago, my mom gave me a poem I wrote when I was 12 years old. And I hate poetry. <laughs> but I read it and it was a bit shocking for me because the poem I wrote about uh, when I was 12 years old was, my, was about my frustration with inequality. Since I was 12 years old, probably before, but at 12 years old, I wrote it <laughs> in a poem. And I think I've always been struggling with that. So... Uh, I think I've, when you talk about people who have sort of been there and on the way, in these last seven years of, of doing so, I've met uh, people in rural communities in Colombia, teachers, librarians, uh, people in indigenous communities in Colombia who live a very different life than I do. Uh, one would think maybe of more scarcity, but I, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's a different life. You know? And realizing that everybody just needs a sort of a pat on the back and say, go for it. And seeing what people are capable of doing with that. So I have like three examples. I have what, 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 a kid who was 19 years old when we showed him how to do soul. He, he had like an internet kiosk in his, in his uh, rural community and coffee growing area. No, they only had good internet when it was like at seven o'clock in the evening because they live in the mountains. Whatever. And he managed to get his community to learn how to do tons of things, to find new productive projects, new ways of dealing with medical issues of the community just by doing soul with his community. And he managed to convince us to go there and visit him one second time. No, we went once to show him how to do soul. And five years later, we went back to see him. And I thought, no, he was 19 when we met him, you know, 24. And I realized, wow, he, he's really somebody very different from his community. No, his community looks at him like the, the, the freaky guy, but it's very powerful because he really managed to connect his community to the outer world understanding the power of internet. And I was like, wow, this kid is really amazing. No? And, and, and I thought that's what we're here to do, no? to bridge people. Similar to him, there was this other, also a young kid who was also in charge of a public internet kiosk in an indigenous community in the northern part of Colombia. And he he was fascinated with this thing of soul because it was his way of engaging the youth of the indigenous community in valuing the fact that of their in, in, in indigenous beliefs and so on. And, and no, he used the, his internet kiosk to say, what do you guys, what are you interested in? Kids were saying, no, we're interested in video games and animation and videos. And he said, well, why don't you learn how to do your own? 
And so through their soul, so their self-organized learning environment, they started asking questions. How do you do a video game? And they realized they needed to uh, write, they, they needed to have a story to make a video game or to make a video. And so they went to him and they asked him, how, how do we do a video? How, how do we make a story? And he said, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have stories around you? And he said, ah, we can talk to the elders of the community. And they went to hear all these stories of the indigenous elders. And they started making videos, animations, and video games with that and putting them online. And it was no, and he was super happy because they were starting to value their indigenous heritage through using the technology and using the space. And this guy has become a community leader in his community. No, and he's now 25, 26 years old, but he's somebody who people look up to because of this possibility that he gave. And I think, wow, this guy is fascinating. No, and these two. I met a few years ago because I invited them to, to a conference here in my city and, and they come, they stayed in my house. No, and They ate my food and, and they slept in, in, in the room. They met my kids. And I thought, this is really random. This would have never happened in my life. No, And, and, and that's, and I think I, I like the internet because of that, <laughs> because, because it allows for these, all these structures which we have in our society, which limit us, no? You are rich and you're poor and I can't meet you. You are uh, smart and you're not. And that's why we can't interact. Uh, you're a man and you're a woman. And we have all these imaginary barriers between us. And suddenly there is a way in which these barriers kind of dissolve very easily. And so I would say the third person is, is actually the creator of, 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 of mm -hmm. uh, Soul, who's called Sugata Mitra. He's mm -hmm. an Indian guy. I'm also, mm -hmm. my dad is Indian and he's from India and he, he invented this thing and we ended up, uh, and he came to Colombia because he saw what we were doing and, and, and we invited him and he came and he gave a talk and whatever. And we've become very close friends. In, in the way of he's more of my mentor, but he sees what I do and he looks at me like, okay, that sounds a little bit crazy, but go for it. And, and he always tells me something that makes me feel very close to him. He's a very wise person, very funny. And also, and he's the one who's always saying, what if you don't need to do that? What if you, what if no? What if, and no, he does all these questions which make you, ah, wow, you've already thought about this. You. This is cool, no? And I've always thought that you always need somebody like that in your life. But what is cool is that with the internet, it's so much easier to find that one, find that person. And so, but yeah, sorry, I went a bit too long there, but those no. are my, <laughs> I have tons of stories like that, no? So it's it's tough to choose. <laughs> Our question. Can I say one? something before yeah, you? Yes, please, please, sure. Have you seen this movie called Ratatouille? The one of the yes, mouse. Yes, totally, totally. You know, you know the phrase in that in that movie that everyone can cook. No. Yes. Well, I think what I've discovered regarding learning is that everyone can teach, mm -hmm. or totally. and everyone can learn. Mm -hmm. And so when I the, the, in in all these examples, what, what I'm trying to say is there is this thing of. You, you do learn, it's tough to learn alone, no? to be a self-taught, I think it involves an amazing discipline. <laughs> it's really rare. It's much more fun and much easier to be self-taught like in groups. No? And I do say, I, I think I'm a fan of the internet because I feel this is the way in which we are being able to find somebody who can teach, somebody who can learn in a very random, open on a on a, a, a structured way and also in a way which i think is fascinating which is the the possibility of we're all at the same level nobody is more nobody's less there isn't a hierarchy we're kind of killing the hierarchies and this is the truth of course there's everybody who wants to control the hierarchy you know so you have the googles the facebooks the mm -hmm. the microsofts the apples the the amazons but you also have all these tons of people who are just wanting to connect and feeling and and realizing that what you have to give is as powerful as what others have to give and no, no one is better than the other one. And so in this, everyone can cook and everyone, everyone can teach and everyone can learn. The beauty is now 
there's kind of a system of interconnection between us, which is still in its childhood. No, I think the internet is still in its childhood. We're still sort of like, ah, no, too much noise, too much polarization, too much addiction. But as it grows up, we will be able to really transform the system in which we are. And I think that's the power behind self-organized learning thanks to the internet. Here being, what is your sensing? What idea is emerging for you right now? Having this last phrase in the mind that the internet is transforming the self-directed learning and how we are all learners. That there's always in the system components in the system which are resistant. No, everybody's saying, no, don't change it for me. Or I'm happy in the way I'm taking control of this. There's always a kind of a need for control. Self-organized learning is about letting go of control, basically, which has which is kind of doing the totally opposite as what education has been doing for the last 300 years. <laughs> education is about control. What do you need to know? What I want you to know? How do you need to know this and why? No, I, I'm going to give you this education because I need you in this part of the system. I'm going to give you this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to give you this education because I don't want you to mess up my system. <laughs> and so what I think is interesting is my sense is that there is a, There's a beautiful possibility in this moment of humanity, which hasn't happened before. I don't know. And, and I read a little, I, I read history because I, I think it's fascinating, but I haven't seen many cases of this in which this is the moment where you can really quickly, no, I hope in my existence, in my generation, in my lifetime, I can see how we dismount structures, which we have, no, capitalism is, Is it 300, 400 years old? I think this could be a moment in which capitalism would have would move into something different. Maybe more equal. I, I don't know. Maybe more uh, friendly with humans and non-humans mm -hmm. also. And at the same time, realizing what humanity really has is about. So I feel that... Uh, We are kind of in a moment of possibility. And the people who are resistant to this are less and more are emerging with the possibility of, no, this could be different. And I think my work is in the part of trying to just push push there where, where somebody is resistant and say, no, no go, go ahead. Oh, okay, I can do this. It's, it's kind of getting rid of fear. I think one of those mm -hmm. things is, The reason why the things take so long to change or the reason why people are stuck in certain ideas is because they're afraid. And the reason why the system controls us is through fear. So I think what's emerging for me is maybe this is a moment in which we can get rid of fear. We can challenge the system to get rid of fear. We are in this momentum you mentioned. And Definitely. this is your job or emerging for you as this is emerging for everyone. You are uh, slowly and lovely, with love, pushing uh, out of fear. Um, so how do we engage uh, meaningfully with uh, traditional wisdom or indigenous science or wisdom in this momentum? What can we take from there? Well, to be honest, I think the only way to engage is through conversation. <laughs> And, and uh, I'm not, I, I, I hate fundamentalisms. So I do not think that traditional knowledge is the best knowledge. I don't think it's, I don't think it's also neither something that we have to discard, not, not at all. I think it's the possibility of being able to talk and to question. And for me, it's more important what people question, the, the questions that people make than what they actually answer to them <laughs> because I think in the questions is where lies the world of possibilities I also think there's a big issue with understanding kind of the possibilities of beauty <laughs> the possibilities of understanding that there's I'm happy we live in a time where there are many diverse 
beauties. <laughs> there are many different ways of being, although we kind of tend to to uh, homogenize now to become mm -hmm. one single way of being. But then precisely when you're homogenizing, everybody starts to break away and say, no, I want to be different. And that's cool also. No? It's like understanding that constant dynamic of, of conversion towards union and then diversion against towards diversity. But, but um, I do believe that there's, an, I think there's a lot to learn from everyone. I don't think some have more answers than others. I think everybody is kind of worthy, not only worthy and valuable, but there is the, the whole issue is really how do you get people to talk? How do you get them to listen? How do you get them to clear their mind from prejudice to listen and to be able to allow for new things to, for different things to emerge and I think that's the big challenge no we how you use what you have which is very valuable but let what you don't have also come out and not be in a conflict with it <laughs> so maybe to close this you, you need these moments of silence no and when you have these moments of silence, you want to be able to conclude. You, know, you want to be able to, to close an idea or, or, or to, to understand. And I always think in this, in this challenge that you are in of reimagining education and challenge which I am in, which is also reimagining education, a, I think the beauty of it is that nobody has the answer. <laughs> uh, but what we do have to aim for is to, is to try to get everyone involved. Everybody should be able to have a say, no? And you can call it democracy. I don't think it's democracy, but you can call it the closest thing we have right now to getting people involved is democracy. But no, I don't think it, that's the necessarily the, 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 the topic we're talking about. I think it's the fact of understanding that it's not about education, it's about learning, one. Mm -hmm. And the next step is not only about learning, but allowing our creativity. And maybe the final point of it all, the reason why is so we all feel a little sense of belonging sense of belonging together to something so i love it i've never met you no and now we're sort of talking here on this device and you're in helsinki i'm in bogota and this is pretty random we, we, it's strange how we would have that, that we would have been able to connect so i think one of the beauties of this moment is being able to be uh, astonished to, to be surprised to allow ourselves to be surprised to smile and laugh with it and 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 maybe that's that's a way of getting rid of all this fear that i was talking about which has us sort of stuck so yeah that would be my my moment now <laughs> thank you very much sanjay very bright thank you very much thank you 